The next bit of algebra for derivatives, we have the quotient rule. So recall, if I took the limit of a quotient, f over g, if g was not equal to zero, our limit was just going to be the limit of f over the limit of g. So that would be exactly what you thought you would get for our limit of a quotient. Just take your limits at the top and the bottom. For a derivative, as we saw with the product rule, things are not going to be so easy. Even worse, for the quotient, you have a bit to memorize here. So while you can kind of visually understand what's happening with the product rule, for the quotient rule, you pretty much have to gut it out by memory. Now, let's take a look at what we have. If I have f over g, I take the derivative, I take the derivative of the top, multiply it by the bottom, so it's f prime times g, then subtract off f times the derivative of the bottom, so that's f times g prime, then we divide everything by the bottom squared, g squared. Okay, now it's not so bad, there's a little sing-song mnemonic that goes with this. It's gonna be low d high less high d low over low squared. Okay, you say that like five times every time before you go to bed, that thing's gonna sink in quick. All right, let's take a look at some examples just to see how it works, and then we'll do more abstract things. Okay, first, of course, we do an example that we can do without using the quotient rule, just to check that it agrees with something we know how to do. So I'm going to use the function f over g, x cubed minus x squared over x. Now, if we wanted, we could just simplify this to x squared minus x. Okay, you have to throw away the point zero since you're not allowed to divide by zero. But then if I take the derivative of what's left over, I'm going to get 2x minus 1. Now let's look at that using the quotient rule. So what I want to do is I want to write f and g out get f prime and g prime, I'll have nice bookkeeping, so that way I can just stick things into the formula carefully. When you get enough practice with this, you can start doing things in your head, but it's a good idea to make sure you're meticulous before you get to that point. One point of trouble is gonna be the minus sign in the numerator. Okay, so I have my f, which is gonna be x cubed minus x squared, my g is x, and then f prime is gonna be equal to three x squared minus two x, g prime is gonna be equal to one. So I go through my song, it's going to be low d high less high d low over low squared. What do we get? So I'm going to have low d high, our low is x, d high is going to be the 3x squared minus 2x, less high d low, our high is going to be x cubed minus x squared, d low is going to be equal to 1, and then I divide everything by low squared, which is x squared. I simplify that out, what are we going to get? Well, we'll have a mess up in top, but you'll notice that's just going to collapse down the two terms. I can divide the x squared into those two terms, then my answer is going to be 2x minus 1, which agrees with what we would get if we just simplified in the first place. Now let's try an example where we can't simplify things. So I want to do x to the 1 third minus 1 over x to the 1 third plus 1. I don't have any tricks to clean this up, so I'm stuck with the quotient rule. I set up fg, f prime, and g prime off to the side, so that way I have clean bookkeeping. Our f prime and g prime are going to turn out to be equal in this case. We're going to use our power rule, which says if I have x to the one third, I bring the one third down, subtract one. So that'll give me one third x to the minus two thirds for both derivatives. Okay, the plus minus one's off the side, go to zero when you take the derivative. Now I apply my quotient rule. Low d high less high d low over low squared. All right, that's going to turn out to be kind of messy. And so what we have here is a good exercise on how to clean up exponents. So what I wouldn't want to do here is to multiply those x to the minus 2 thirds through, because that'll give us something that's sort of messy. What's better is to get rid of the negative exponents by multiplying top and bottom by terms that cancel out the exponents and also the fractions. So I'm going to multiply by 3 x to the 2 thirds. What happens here? When the 3 hits the 1 thirds, they go away. When the x to the 2 thirds, hits the x to the minus 2 thirds, they go away also. We're just going to pick up that term in the bottom now. So what do I wind up with? Well, I'll just have these things in parentheses, and then we take their difference. So the only thing that will be left over in the top is going to be 2. What we're left with then is 2 over 3 x to the 2 thirds times x to the 1 third plus 1 quantity squared. So that's my low squared. How do we get the quotient rule? 
First, I'm going to consider the special case where f is equal to 1. So that's going to be derivative of 1 over g equals minus g prime over g squared. To get that, we're going to use the limit definition of derivative on 1 over g. So that's going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over g of x plus h minus 1 over g of x all over h. I want to clean that up since I have a fraction inside of a fraction. Multiply top and bottom by g of x, g of x plus h. Well, the things in the bottom are just going to collect as they are. And then up top, we're going to have the difference just switch the order. So it's going to turn into g of x minus g of x plus h. If I pull a minus sign out, we notice that the derivative of g prime is starting to take shape. So if I pull a minus sign out, I have g of x plus h minus g of x over h. That's the gadget that's going to go to minus g prime. What's left over? We have a g of x. Since the limit's going h going to 0, g of x is just going to stay g of x. So we treat that as a constant. For g of x plus h, since I'm differentiable at x, that means we're continuous at x. So when I take that limit, it's the same as an evaluation. So that's also going to go to g of x. So I wind up with minus g prime over g squared as promised. Now, once you have the special rule, finishing up is just the product rule. I have f over g prime. That's the same as f times 1 over g. So now all I have to do is take the derivative of each term, leave the other term alone, and then add everything up. So I'm going to have f prime times 1 over g plus f times 1 over g prime. 1 over g prime we just saw is minus g prime over g squared. Now it's just collecting your terms together, and then you're going to wind up with your quotient rule. OK, final example. So we had a rational power rule when we had a positive rational number in the exponent of x. Now we're going to get that whenever we have any negative exponent, as long as we have a rational number. Note this also covers the case when we're looking at x to the minus n, where n is an integer, positive integer. All right. Let's push it through. So if I use the special case for the quotient rule, x to the minus m over n prime is going to be equal to x to the mn prime, with a minus sign out in front, over x to the mn squared. OK, notice I'm writing x to the minus m over n as 1 over x to the m over n. Now I can compute that. We know how to do that. So derivative of the top is going to be you bring your mn down subtract 1 off of it. In the bottom, we're squaring, so what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to move a 2mn from the bottom to the top with a minus sign, and that's going to change the m over n in the top exponent to a minus m over n, and you notice what comes out. We wind up bringing our exponent down, which is minus m over n, and then the exponent that's still up there, we subtract 1 off of that. So the answer is going to be your usual power rule.